we will wait for five minutes let all the students join then i will start resume the class सभी लोग अपना अटेंडेंस बना लो आज का मेनी स्टूडेंट्स हैव नॉट अपडेटेड देयर अटेंडेंस टिल नाउ लेट मी सी सब मेरे में अटेंडेंस ऑप्शन नहीं शो कर रहा है अंजलि यस सर तो तुम तो इनरोल हो ऑलरेडी पहले का सारा अटेंडेंस तो बना ही हो फिर क्यों नहीं सो करेगा सर आज के डेट का नहीं दिखा रहा है लैब में होगा ईएससी 101 पी बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग लैब
So let's proceed. Let's move to the topic losses and efficiency of the induction machine. So the main losses that is losses in induction motor is written here. So you can see from here, the losses on the induction machine is mainly three types of losses are there. That is magnetic losses. These magnetic losses mainly occur due to the different magnetic uh, materials that we have used in the manufacturing of induction motion that in that losses this is known as your magnetic loss there is a mechanical loss mechanical loss means the winding loss will be there the frictional loss will be there because of the rotation of the machine the, the, this mechanical loss occurs okay there is a shaft ro rotating uh, rotating machine loss okay there is electrical losses electrical loss means there is a core uh, there is mainly electrical losses that we have discussed in the transformer is quite similar in case of your induction machine that is your core loss will be there core loss you can say iron loss then there will be your you know, ohmic loss or you can say proper loss that occurs in your uh, wire of the uh, machines you know, because wire is the essential component essential component to build up a machine or to for the electrical system then there is a stray load loss that occurs in the nuts and bolts due to the leakage of the fluxes then there is a eddy current loss that occurs due to the if you do not use a stray laminated part then the electric eddy current losses will be at there because of the your a leakage flux okay so in that case the three losses that in the induction motor occurs that is your magnetic losses it is a constant because because of the manufacturing part or because of the construction part this cannot be ignored and this this will become constant mechanical loss mechanical loss you cannot increase the value of the length of the shaft or the size of the machine as uh, as you as you desire but depending upon your practical importance this mechanical loss that's why this mechanical loss is constant now for the electrical losses electrical losses will have your uh, electrical losses will have your ohmic loss there, uh, there is a copper loss, ohmic loss or copper loss, both are same, same. That depends on your current because in transformer, I've already told you the ohmic loss is related with the formula I square R. As the value of a current varies, the I, I will vary. That means the loss will vary. In the same case, when you uh, change the area of the flux rotation in the induction machine, uh, in induction machine, there will be some magnetic uh, magnetic losses will be there. Uh, yeah, sorry, iron loss will be there. That is called your hysteresis law. Okay, so that's why these electrical losses are variable. Then explanation explanation part is given here. The magnetic loss, also called as core loss, or iron loss, losses are in stator core and rotor core because of the rotating magnetic field. So Core loss is related with your the combination of hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. So in induction machine, the hysteresis loss occurs due to the alternating, you can see, due to the alternate change in magnetic field in the stator core. As the size or you can say due to the air gap, there is an alternate change in magnetic field. There is a sinusoidal function as you are giving. This is an AC machine. For the AC machine, the input will be a sinusoidal function. And if the sinusoidal function we apply, then there is a positive term as well as the negative term in the positive. That's why this is called alternate change. That's why it, it has used the word alternate change. So in that case, the hysteresis loss occurs and hysteresis loss occurs due to that. That's, uh, that's why I have told you hysteresis loss occur mainly your the um, size when you in vary the size of the core material then also this hysteresis loss hysteresis losses occurs now hysteresis loss can be minimized by using a 
high grade silicon steel so in maximum machine or you can say in transformer also we use your silicon steel for the for the manufacturing of the core so to reduce the stress loss and to eddy current losses mainly occurs due due to the stack of the uh, ma magnetic material that we use so if we use a laminated core part then in that case the eddy current losses will be reduced okay so eddy current losses you can say occur due to the flow of eddy current through body of the stator that is your leakage flux that is the part of leakage flux can be minimized by using laminated construction of the stator core that we have already discussed in transform also so to reduce eddy currents the lamination should be provided now two losses are dependent on supply effects that means this magnetic losses two types of losses are eddy current loss and hysteresis losses both losses are depends upon supply frequency now the stator frequency is equal to the supply frequency because here we are talking about induction motor so induction motor will take in your electrical supply and take out your mechanical energy that means it, it transforms the electrical energy to mechanical energy so that's why this stator frequency will always be equal to your supply frequency hence the iron loss for the stator is more because iron loss mainly depends upon your frequency as we have discussed in the transform also i have already told, uh, shown you the how frequency depends upon the iron loss or you can say core loss okay so if the iron loss iron loss is stator is increasing as the supply of stator both frequency will equal to each other so that's why iron loss will be more than the rest of the losses now for the frequency of the rotor this supply is less than uh, of the rotor that means frequency of the rotor is lesser than the frequency of the stator so this rotor frequency will related with your sleep okay how this will be related we will deal in the some other class that means you can see the rotor frequency is given as sleep into stator frequency that means a rotor frequency f2 equal to sleep s into f1 f1 will be your supply frequency or you can say stator frequency that is the relation between rotor frequency and your uh, stator frequency that means rotor frequency is the is equal to the multiplication of sleep and the st stator frequency okay now you can see that hence iron losses are very small as the rotor frequency is smaller than the stator frequency so the iron loss that we have is in the rotor part is very small and the, it can be neglected in the running running condition so these two losses ad current loss and hysteresis loss have three important points here written as or you can say magnetic losses you have three important three important points that is two losses are dependent on supply frequency first right magnetic losses is the combination magnetic losses or you can say iron loss is the combination of these two losses now these two losses you can explain hysteresis loss and ad current loss in this two part and in the next part you can write both losses depend upon depends on the supply frequency now stator frequency is equal to the supply frequency so the iron loss will be higher and rotor frequency is lesser than the supply frequency or stator frequency so the iron loss will be small and can be neglected in the running running condition okay so this is the magnetic losses now next point is your mechanical loss mechanical losses is mainly your friction and windage losses friction loss due to the rotating part because induction machine is a rotating machine so we can see that we have we can uh, in, encounter a friction part air friction and you can say machine friction so there will be a friction loss and second one is your windage loss windage loss means the winding that is provided on the peripheral of the rotor part Th that those are called windage losses so the combination of friction loss and windage loss is named as your mechanical loss now these losses are smaller than due to speed drop in very small okay these mechanical losses are very very small due to the speed drop speed drop means full load to your normal uh, speed full speed to normal speed so that uh, one term that we have discussed in transformer that was your voltage regulation voltage regulation that we have discussed that was your no load minus full load divided by full load that was our voltage regulation but in case of this mechanical losses there is this is second point that is losses are lesser due to speed drop now speed drop can be defined or speed regulation can be defined as full load full speed minus low speed divided by low speed that will give you the speed regulation okay and for the mechanical loss this is the constant the, as we have discussed 
there are two types of constant losses magnetic losses plus mechanical losses so in an average we can say that constant loss is the combination of magnetic losses and mechanical losses now put the magnetic losses have two types eddy current loss hysteresis loss and mechanical losses also have two types that is your friction loss and windage loss so in the accumulation of constant losses you can write there is a four losses that is accumulating accumulating in the constant losses first one is your eddy current loss second one is your hysteresis loss third one is your friction loss fourth one is your windage loss that those four types of losses accumulately may make a constant loss so you can see that constant loss equal to iron loss plus mechanical loss iron loss combined with your your eddy your eddy current plus hysteresis loss and mechanical loss combined with friction loss and windage loss this is all about the two types of losses and the third one is your electrical losses third one is your electrical loss electrical losses mainly uh, included with your ohmic loss or you can say copper loss that occurs in the stator part as well as the rotor part as ohmic loss depends upon the value of the current the current will flow in the stator as well as the rotor part because in both stator and rotor part we are using a wire and wire will have will always have some resistance and if there is a resistance there will be ohmic loss present there so electric loss will be different for stator loss as well as your uh, your rotor loss okay so you can see here in the point wise it is it is written due to the resistance of stator and rotor wind you can see due to the resistance of stator and rotor winding stator winding will have some resistance because there is a the wire will be present in the stator part also so there will be stator resistance and wire electrical wire is also there in the rotor part so there will also be a rotor resistance okay so that in those cases we can say that the stator copper loss and the rotor copper loss occurs in both cases okay so uh, electrical losses occurs for stator stator case as well as the rotor case that's why it is named as your stator copper loss and your rotor copper loss now for the further explanation electrical losses it is written as when load varies either increase or decrease the current will vary okay as the, it is a mechanic it is a electrical in, uh, transformation that is you are transforming electrical energy to mechanical energy so ele electrical energy can vary as the current will vary because if you uh, varies the load in the motor part then if the load is variable then the current will also vary with the time the current may increase or decrease depending upon the type of load that we have used either resistive load or inductive load or your capacitive load okay so depending upon the type of load, load that we are using the current will be variable so in accumulation this is or in the combination of this concept we can say that electrical losses are variable so that means constant loss is this one iron loss plus mechanical loss iron loss is the combination of hysteresis loss as well as eddy current loss and mechanical losses is the combination of uh, your uh, friction loss and windage loss but in case of uh, electrical losses this is variable one and variable losses will be encountered if we enclose or accumulate the stator copper loss as well as the cop uh, rotor copper loss now both stator copper loss as well as the rotor copper loss will be accompanied by the same formula that is i square r i square r because in both stator and rotor winding there will be ohmic loss okay so ohmic or you can say copper loss now in the stator part that we have discussed this is the primary part of the induction machine this is related with your transformer so for the primary part the uh, ohmic loss or copper loss will be i1 square r1 and the rotor part this will be i2 square r2 okay when you combine both of these you will get the total copper loss but in general but in general we are discussing about three phase induction motor so for the three phase induction motor in general the total ohmic loss you can write, write as 3 i2 square r2 okay that means 3 i2 square r2 you can write for the your electrical losses you can see this you can see in the below part it is written rotor copper losses equal to 3 i2 square r2 i2 represents the rotor current and r2 represents your rotor resistance and 3 represents your 
three phase induction motor if you have single phase induction motor you can ignore the value of three numerical three just write i2 per r2 but for the three phase induction motor the three will be included and the rot as we are dealing with rotor copper losses so the rotor for the rotor copper losses the current will be i2 and the resistance will be r2 similarly for the stator copper loss the value will be 3 into i1 is per r1 stator copper loss 3 i1 is per r1 so this is all about your constant loss and variable loss now this is the single line diagram for your losses of the induction machine you can represent single line diagram in the losses of the induction machine in a single line diagram as this is a induction machine that, that is your two electrical energy to induction motor we are giving. that means you are giving input as electrical energy and output as mechanical energy it will have two types of uh, uh, winding that is your static part is a stator winding and the rotor part is a rotor winding as the rotor winding is accumulating uh, rotor is totally assembled on the uh, shaft so this is called your shaft here we have taken the shaft part so from here you can say this is your three phase ac source three phase ac source means from the let, let us say this is your generation generating power plant so from here you are giving the electrical energy to the in, stator winding of the induction machine okay you are giving the stator winding of the induction machine the electrical input so it is given as p suffix i i represents your electrical engine input pi pi is your input now in the stator winding, there will be stator copper loss and stator core loss because stator copper loss will be included because of the wire present in the stator winding. As the stator winding is, is the accumulation of the north pole, south pole, and different magnetic material will be available in the stator. So it, there will be a stator core loss also. So the total stator loss is the combination of stator copper loss as well as the stator core loss. So in the stator winding, there will be two types of losses present here stator copper loss and stator core loss now after the st stator winding the output will be given this is called air gap power this is called air gap so in the air gap this power will be generated that is pg and after that this rotor copper loss will be there because there is a air gap between the stator part and the rotor part if they if uh, air gap is not there that means that does not belong to induction machine the air gap must be there in the induction machine so that the rotor part will be is easily rotatable. Okay, that's why this is termed as a PG or you can air gap power or you can say air gap loss. Okay, you can say this is your friction loss will be there in this case. Now, after encountering this stator winding, then there will be air gap and after air gap path will be your through the rotor part. Now, rotor part is also included with your rotor copper because all the component that is described here that is a rotor winding and for the rotor winding there will be rotor copper loss because there is no there is very small material of the magnet will be there so that's why we have used only rotor copper loss and after rotating copper loss the output will be given and this is your mechanical power developed after as this is your induction motor so electrical power is totally converted to the me mechanical form after it uh, crosses through your rotor part that's why this is termed as your mechanical power developed that's why this is termed as a mechanical power developed and as the output power is developed so it will deliver to the output through the shaft as shaft is the combination of rotor so it is a combination of friction as well as windage the strain load loss so shaft is the combination of friction winding and strain load so there is a particular term terminology at which these losses are occurring state of winding has two types of losses there is a rotor, then there will be rotor losses, rotor copper loss. And for the shaft, this is your friction winding and strain load loss. So this is the single line diagram of the induction machine losses. Okay. Power flow diagram. I don't think this will be, this is your in syllabus. Okay, now nah. it will, it is in your syllabus. Just remember these formulas, then only you will then this concept will be easily accessible. So, power flow diagram, simple language, it is written in simple language. Just you have to understand and go through these things. 
just wait for two minutes just go through the previous slides i think all of you have taken the screenshot you must take the screenshot of these concepts otherwise you will not get this type of notes So let's just start once again. So this is the power flow diagram. This is important for to understand the efficiency of an induction machine. So induction motor normally converts electrical power into mechanical power. That is already known to all of us. Now three phase supply fed to stator. That is this is the input power. As you can say, this is the power. This is all our line. This is a voltage line. This is this is the line voltage. This is the line current and caused by the phi is the relation between angle between this line voltage and phase uh, line voltage and line current now this is the power for three phase so that's why we have taken root three part now as you can say 
as you can see as the input power as you are giving the input power if the stator is your stator is your star connected and for the star connected the line voltage is related to phase voltage by root three times and the line current will be equal to the phase current so this real il cos phi you can write in terms of your phase voltage and phase current also because if you put the value of real equal to root 3 into v phase you will get root 3 into root 3 3 and then this line voltage will be converted to phase voltage and this line current will be converted to phase current because in a star connection the line current and phase current will be equal so for that this is the uh, this is the relation or this is the input power in terms of your line okay but in terms of your phase connection when you write this term you will get 3 into v phase i phase cos phi okay here it is written in terms of your root 3 line voltage and line current but when you take it when you take input power in terms of phase then this will this equation will become 3 into v phase i phase cos phi now 3 is how it is becoming 3 from root 3 to to 3 value because this line voltage this line voltage will become root 3 into phase voltage this line voltage will become root 3 into v for for a star connection now for the delta connection if the stator one is given as delta connection in that case this line voltage this line current will become root 3 into line uh, phase current because in delta connection this line voltage will be equal to phase voltage but for the line current that will be equal to root 3 into phase voltage either both of the case in both of the cases for the phase value this root 3 becomes 3 v phase i phase cos phi okay so you can either consider this in line term line equation term or you can write it as your phase equation term so in both cases there is a, thus there is a uh, transforming of root 3 to 3 this v line will become v phase i line will become line current will become phase current and the cos phi will remain as it is okay now then if you are giving the supply then there will be losses in a stator that is called stator stator losses that is psl that is your 3 i1 square r1 okay stator loss will comprise of two types of losses that we have discussed first one is stator copper loss and one is a stator core loss at core loss is a constant there is only variable that is a stator copper loss copper loss that means i1 square r1 the copper loss will be because of three phase we will deal with three i1 square r1 so from here stator losses will be occurred now remaining power as you are giving let us suppose you you have 100 rupees you have a, a, lost you have uh, used out of 100 rupees 10 uh, 10 rupees of chocolate the remaining will be your 90 rupees so it is from here you can say that this is your input power then uh, out of this input power there there is a loss there will occur some loss that is psl given so the remaining loss that is p input minus psl that will be your power given to the rotor part now remaining part is transferred to the rotor magnetically not electrically this is magnetically magnetically that means due to the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction this is magnetically coupled in induction machine is also known, known as magnetically coupled machine okay magnetically coupled because of the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so from he, here you can see that stator loss when you minus this input loss minus a stator loss the remaining output uh, remaining power will be transferred to the rotor now it is called the output of the stator because the stator part and the rotor part as you can say there is a slight difference so the output of the stator will become input of the rotor so this is the output of the stator output of the stator means input minus stator losses and the input of the rotor will be input minus loss this is the concept and the input to the rotor is given as p2 okay now after reaching this power p2 in the rotor part this will also create some losses in the rotor part now rotor part will also uh, core loss then there is a copper loss in the rotor part now the rotor copper loss when you minus this rotor copper loss from this p2 then you will get your uh, then you will get your the output power so you can see that normally rotor iron losses are very small there will be two types of losses rotor uh, copper loss and rotor iron loss as that of the stator part this rotor will also have two types copper loss and core loss but rotor core loss or you can say iron loss is very very small so it can be neglected so there the, in the rotor part there is only one loss will be there 
that is your rotor copper loss. So from here, you can say this is the rotor copper loss. As you can say, you are giving input as root 3 into line voltage into current, line current into cos phi. So you are giving the input, you have given. Now in this part, there is a loss. So out here, this loss is given as, uh, it is named as your PSL. So the output at this point, this PG will get input minus loss. That will be the output of the stator. But this PG is the input of the rotor. Now as the input of the rotor, this is the PG or you can say this is the P2. We have taken here P2. Here we have taken P2. So for this value of P2, again, this P2 will encounter in the rot rotor part, that is, it will be included in the rotor part. Now rotor part will have loss, that is copper loss, as the iron loss is very much small. So that is that will be neglected, only losses will be copper loss. So here you can minus the copper rotor copper loss with IP2, you will get your output mechanical power. This is your mechanical power developed, that is your PM, that is your PM. So here remaining part is called mechanical power development. Now this is the copper loss that is the rotor copper loss that is 3 I2 square R2. Now here the mechanical power developed is given as P2. The rotor input rotor input minus the copper loss is given as P2. As you can see this is the output power. So you are giving the input to the rotor as P2. Here it is written PG but it should be P2. So you are giving the input to the rotor as P2 and there is a loss of uh, 3 I2 square R2 or you can say PCU. So P2 minus PCU will, 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 uh, you will get PM that is mechanical power developed. This PM is equal to P2 minus PCU. So the due to the rotating part, the output power is given as due to the, there will be some mechanical losses will be there. As you can say, this is the mechanical power developed that is given as PM. Now in the shaft part, there will be some types of losses. Now for the shaft or the mechanical, total mechanical output power, you can say this PM is your input and there will be some losses. So after my, uh, differentiating the value of this losses from this mechanical power developed, you will get the total output of the induction machine. You can see from here, the total output power is given as PM. That is uh, mechanical power developed minus the shaft uh, losses, shaft power losses. So this will be the accumulation of your output power. So from here in the accumulation part, you can see that, you can see that in this single line diagram, this is the input power that is root three VL IL cos phi. Then there is a loss occurring, stator winding. So this is named as PSL. So after differentiating this PSL from P1, PI, you will get P2 or you can say PG or you can say the input power to the rotor. Now, is this this is the input power to the rotor. Now, again, the rotor part will have uh, two types of losses, rotor copper loss and an iron loss. Iron loss will have the lo lo lowest value, so it can be ignored. And there will be only copper loss. So in the rotor part, there are only a copper loss. So differentiating the copper loss value from this input of the rotor, you will get the mechanical power developed. This mechanical power is the input to the shaft as this is the input power to the shaft and shaft will also have the friction, windage and straight load losses. So after differentiating this loss, you will get the total out. Differentiating these losses from this mechanical power developed, you will get the total output of the induction machine. That is what given here. This output is mechanical power developed minus the mechanical load the losses. That will give the total. Now the rotor efficiency is given by this equation. We have less than one minute. So finally, rejoin with the same link. Then we will proceed to the last topic. Today's last topic, efficiency of the induction machine. Okay. That will be a 30 minute session, the last session. Okay. So all of you must join the next session within one to two minutes. I'm ending this session, so kindly read.